Greetings and welcome to uh, this week's midweek update. We have a, a handful of things to cover, both uh, current events and to identify with you uh, what's going to be happening in the coming weeks, as well as what's going to be maintaining over that time as well. Um, we also have a few updates regarding our reopening and then a focus on the Holy Spirit as we anticipate the Feast of Pentecost this Sunday. Uh, so firstly, some of the things that we do and we will keep doing. Firstly, our daily Liturgy of the Word podcasts that are available on our homepage. It's a, an audio recording of the daily readings and a little homily and some of the prayers from Mass and a prayer of spiritual communion uh, to kind of assist us within this time. Uh, I plan on continue producing that uh, in the weeks and the months ahead. So um, that'll be a resource that'll continue to be available to us. Uh, next, the YouTube Mass that we make available for Sundays, that'll also be a resource that we continue to produce during the time of our restricted attendance at public Masses. So um, that'll be very linear with the dispensation that the bishop has granted to all Catholics, um, not having to attend Mass on Sundays because of the inability to do so. So as soon as the bishop kind of reinstates that Catholic obligation, um, then we'll shift the way we make uh, our online resource for Mass available. So decisions to be made down the road. Uh, if you have any preferences, feel free to shoot me a note. Um, but at this time, we're going to stick with our Sunday YouTube Mass as well. Also, our daily rosary. So some of you have taken advantage of the Facebook rosary opportunity that I've been making available throughout the course of the month of May. Um, it's kind of a little undertaking, one, to honor Our Lady in this uh, devotional manner, uh, but also hopefully to be present online in such a way uh, to encourage you uh, to kind of pick up uh, the daily habit a little more easily of praying the rosary every day. This is uh, an invitation that we've received from Our Lady uh, to pray the rosary every day. It is the, the school of Mary teaching us more deeply the mysteries of the life of Christ and salvation. Uh, it is the protection against the enemy. Uh, it deepens our mind and our hearts within the events of salvation for our sake. Uh, and it maintains a great peace of soul. It keeps us in that kind of contemplative mode, um, always drawing the heavenly mysteries into our connection uh, with the daily living. So um, throughout the month of May, I'll be doing that, and I want to find a way to keep doing that uh, beyond the month of May, but with our morning Mass schedule opening up for our limited attendance Masses, um, that'll kind of cut into the morning pattern uh, that I've uh, had over the course of the month of May. Um, it's easy when everything's shut down to kind of keep some of those things, um, but we're designed to be reopened. So uh, I'll find a way to keep that rosary going, so stay tuned there. And if you haven't joined me, please do so. Um, if you can't catch me when I uh, broadcast it live, uh, then you have the ability later in the day uh, to revisit. I'll try and list uh, in the, the title of the uh, posting, uh, what mysteries of the rosary we're, we're praying, uh, and uh, that should be helpful uh, as well. Um, going on, just recently, yesterday, we had our 8th grade graduation. Our 2020 graduates uh, ended their year in cap and gown. It was beautiful. Uh, the day was nice and sunny, a little too hot for Father and uh, his blacks, um, but it's okay. Um, it's a beautiful celebration, but we were able to, we were able to kind of make a nice graduation ceremony, uh, wherein our students were able to wear their cap and gowns, uh, a moment that focused on them as they approached, uh, a table, uh, that had their diplomas laid out upon it. Um, we had, uh, them kind of stay in their family vehicles and then kind of drive around. So it was, it was very nice, uh, to see that. And uh, we're so happy that it went the way it did. If you're interested in uh, taking a peek uh, at how that ceremony unfolded, um, you can visit our school's Facebook page. And it's one of the recent video postings uh, that we had. Um, you'll know which one it is because it says 
congratulations, graduates of 2020, or something like that, right? Very good. So, um, so congrats to our, gra uh, congrats to our graduates. Um, our thoughts and prayers will be with them as they uh, encounter the summer and make their preparations for their high school studies. Uh, but also, this is the last week of school um, for our students. And so a big, um, I'm sure, something that our uh, teachers and students and parents are looking forward to because of the unique nature of the past few months of study um, that has been, uh, it's, it's been a, a deep transition, right? I think we handled it very well uh, at the school, um, obviously requiring a lot of extra work on the part of our teachers and kind of bending those, uh, bending their brains to bring everything that they desire to bring to the students through the limited fashion uh, that they had to work with. Um, but hearing very, very positive things about that. So I'm super grateful to all of them and to the efforts that our parents have made uh, to work with their kids. Um, some situations being easier than others. Um, and uh, we're very grateful that we're finishing strongly this year. Um, <clears throat> very good. Moving along to our reopening elements, I just wanted to touch on a few things regarding our reopening, not wanting to duplicate too much of what was said last week, uh, but really just looking at a few key points uh, for us here. Uh, first, uh, we have been training our volunteer captains uh, to assist with those people who will be involved within the facilitation of mass. Um, those who help with mass are not included in the 10% count, uh, and but they're also available uh, to attend mass as well. So um, it's a little little loophole to get a few more people uh, in the doors, but um, it, it's uh, something that we're gonna you know utilize appropriately um, for the sake of uh, bringing us back to the altar in that regard. Um, so at this moment. We are in the midst of populating our volunteer lists um, to assist in those various positions. And I'll talk about those in just one moment. The two other things I wanted to bring to your attention uh, is to let you know that if you kind of hear people at uh, people in the parish saying how they've like been to mass or this or that over the course of the next few days, I uh, just wanted you to know that Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we have like a select group, a volunteer group, um, that's working with us to kind of uh, ease us into this process, right? So uh, a, f a few weeks ago, uh, we put out a one question survey if you'd be willing to attend uh, a mass with a 10 person capacity. We got 143 responses in the positive for that. Um, and with 10 people per mass, um, we don't necessarily have 14 mass opportunities to hit everyone, but we're able to get most of it, everyone kind of worked in, uh, worked into that. So um, this, over the course of the next four days, um, we're gonna have the private masses going with kind of a, a pre-selected group. They're gonna help us with some observations, um, work with our volunteers, help our volunteers kind of get acclimated to some of their instructions. Even the priests have to get used to um, kind of the different movements and points of attention uh, that we have during the liturgy so that we're not distracted by it. So we can t continue to be prayerful during the midst of that time. So um, if you hear somebody go in the mass in the next four days and wonder why you missed out, uh, don't worry. Uh, we're kind of running our little uh, test run, if you will, of being safe and kind of keeping everybody uh, aware of their points of good training. Um, so what does that mean for the rest of the parish? Well, uh, after um, this trial period, beginning June 1st, uh, we'll be opening up um, the public masses in a limited fashion uh, to the rest of the parish with our biggest like sign up and invitation focused on the weekend of the 6th and 7th of June. Okay, so that's when uh, we look to kind of open up the month calendar in the month of June and uh, invite the parish to um, uh, sign up to attend Mass. So we're going to be using two different software platforms uh, at this point uh, to schedule 
our volunteers. We're going to be looking at the ministry scheduler as we typically use. So if you're currently in a ministry, then that'll be very uh, familiar to you. Uh, and then those who are looking to attend Mass uh, will have uh, a link available to you so you can sign up uh, through a software platform called the Sign Up Genius. And what that does is it has a list of all the available uh, all the available masses and then has specific slots uh, in each mass that you're able to sign up for. Um, so in looking at that, uh, it's uh, not a perfect vehicle, but it's a very helpful vehicle uh, in assuring that all the masses are filled because we would hate to have empty seats in a limited fashion, knowing that others are out there wanting to attend mass. Um, but it'll be it'll be very um, it'll be very good for us uh, to to be uh, kind of populating our our lists in that manner. Um, also, um, well, furthermore, uh, with regard to that uh, sign up link, um, simply look to flock note. Uh, our flock note uh, attendance, if you will. We have over 1,700 families uh, signing up and uh, registered under Flocknote, and uh, over over 50 to 60 percent um, of uh, those messages that get sent out uh, are opened and read. So we're very grateful for that. Um, but that'll be the main vehicle that we utilize for the sake of giving you that link. So keep your eye on Flocknote within the next couple of days and uh, you'll have that link to sign up to attend Mass. Um, if you're interested in a volunteer position, we have five different volunteers slots available. First is a Mass coordinator. They organize and set up for Mass. Um, we recognize them on Sundays, kind of being in the sacristy and kind of directing traffic uh, in that regard. Uh, but they're very helpful uh, to the priest um, in, in the fact that they verify that everything is um, in place for the celebration of Mass. Um, the lector position will be available, and that'll just be one lector per Mass, whether it's a weekday or a weekend, we'll only have one lector, and uh, that, <coughs> excuse me, that will be uh, a function as normal, uh, but then just a few extra points for uh, hygiene and sanitation as well, um, a few different protocols there. So, um, our greeter will have a person at the entrance of the church kind of welcoming everybody in. Uh, we'll have the uh, Sign Up Genius list of those who have uh, reserved a, a place to be at Mass. And then we'll just simply, you know, verify that you have attended and we'll uh, and then we'll we'll work with that from there. So if you need anything, that greeter is sort of a uh, an information desk type of person. Um, so if you have any questions about what you need to do or what have you, um, they'll be a, a helpful resource to you as you uh, come into church, okay? Uh, our usher, this will be a little different than our regular ushers in the red jackets. Um, this will be a person who actually assists the direction of the mass attendees to available places to sit in the church. Um, several of our pews are cordoned off to maintain distancing um, kind of front to back uh, within the church. Um, but they'll also be utilized for uh, Holy Communion, kind of dismissing one side or the other at a time. Um, and then they'll be used to assist in exiting as well. So um, it'll be uh, kind of a, just kind of people work, right? Kind of helping people where to go, um, knowing that this is kind of new, um, having that resource will be very helpful um, to our prayer experience. Uh, and then finally, we have a cleaner position. So a person who assists in the sanitization process uh, after Mass. Um, so they're not a full-fledged uh, uh, maintenance church cleaner in that regard. So we're going to be uh, kind of upping our frequency of our maintenance staff in our daily cleaning of the church. Uh, but this will be a person that uh, utilizes either disinfectant wipes or sprays uh, within the church and in the restroom uh, to address those contact points um, which may have been touched over the course of, of Mass. So uh, don't worry, you don't need your big rubber gloves to go up to your elbows and 
you won't be at the church for hours. So it'll just be a quick uh, desanitization or sanitization process um, for the sake of uh, the next group coming in. So uh, very approachable um, positions there. So if you're interested, reach out to us. Uh, you can do that a couple different ways. Um, if you're in email correspondence with anybody from the parish regularly, kind of reach out and we'll direct that in the right way. Um, we do have a, a new email address created for the sake of any specific questions regarding reopening. So that's reopen, R-E-O-P-E-N, at org. So similar email address to anybody on staff, um, reopen at org, And that email is read by our reopening advisory committee. So there's four of us on that. Uh, and that gets checked every day, multiple times a day. So um, if you have any questions or requests, please uh, contact us there. Very good. I think that's everything for reopening. Um, our final note, the Holy Spirit. This time is very specific and blessed in relationship to the Holy Spirit. Why do I say that? Well, one, because it is. Uh, two, because this period of time within salvation history is one where the early apostles and disciples and Mary were all together praying in the upper room, awaiting the gift of the Holy Spirit to be poured out upon them. So basically, chronologically, if you look from Ascension to Pentecost, that's a nine day segment of time. This was the church's first nine days of prayer to the Holy Spirit, which is where we get our tradition for the novena, the nine days of prayer to a specific saint or devotion uh, for a particular intention. So um, this is the church's first novena, praying to the Holy Spirit. And uh, why the Holy Spirit? Our Lord indicated that the Holy Spirit was going to be sent out so as to, to guide, to inspire, to convict in an awareness of sin, to fill with uh, the zeal and radiance of the faith, um, so that God would be providing for our needs through the Holy Spirit as he is seated at the right hand of the Heavenly Father in heaven. So uh, this was what he anticipated or what he uh, indicated to the apostles and the disciples as he was uh, preparing to ascend into heaven. So what does that mean for us? It means that we tune in in a very unique way to the life of the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the most elusive, if you will, of the three persons of the Trinity. The Father, very clear, we understand what a Father is, um, almighty, all-knowing, all-powerful. That applies to all three persons of the Trinity. We know who Jesus is. Uh, we've seen him. He has taken on human flesh. He is in our life. Um, he is present in the Eucharist. Uh, he's present in the Gospels. We know Jesus very, very well, but the Holy Spirit uh, seems to be one that people have more of a difficulty connecting with because of the nature of the Holy Spirit, which is to be moving and inspiring and as uh, kind of mysterious as the wind. Uh, we don't know where it comes from or where it goes, but we know that it's with us, right? So that statement applies both to the wind and to, and to the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, so in this way, we turn to the Holy Spirit and we uh, identify the ways in which the life of the Holy Spirit impacts us and opens our eyes to the truths of heaven. It inspires us to do good. It gives us zeal within moments of witnessing the faith. It gives us gentle promptings within times when we're seeking to make decisions or even out of the blue prompts us toward the good for the sake of our holiness or the helpfulness of others. So what I would like to do to conclude our midweek update is to pray the litany to the Holy Spirit, a very beautiful prayer, a very powerful prayer, uh, but maybe it's one that'll help us kind of dial in to some of the different ways in which we as a family of faith reach out to the Holy Spirit and seek blessings from that third person of the Trinity who loves us as much as Christ does, as much as the Heavenly Father does. So um, very beautiful there.
So let us pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The litany to the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Divine Essence, one true God, have mercy on us. Spirit of truth and wisdom, have mercy on us. Spirit of holiness and justice, have mercy on us. Spirit of understanding and counsel, have mercy on us. Spirit of love and joy, have mercy on us. Spirit of peace and patience, have mercy on us. Spirit of meekness, have mercy on us. Spirit of benignity and goodness, have mercy on us. Love substantial of the Father and the Son, have mercy on us. Love and life of saintly souls, have mercy on us. Fire ever burning, have mercy on us. Living water to quench the thirst of hearts, have mercy on us. From all evil, deliver us, O Holy Spirit. From all impurity of soul and body, deliver us, O Holy Spirit. From all gluttony and sensuality, deliver us, O Holy Spirit. From all attachment to the things of the earth, deliver us, O Holy Spirit. From all hypocrisy and pretense, deliver us, O Holy Spirit. From all imperfections and deliberate faults, deliver us, O Holy Spirit. From our own will, deliver us, O Holy Spirit. From slander, deliver us, O Holy Spirit. From deceiving our neighbors, deliver us, O Holy Spirit. From our passions and disorderly appetites, deliver us, O Holy Spirit. From our inattentiveness to your holy inspirations, deliver us, O Holy Spirit. From despising little things, deliver us, O Holy Spirit. From debauchery and malice, deliver us, O Holy Spirit. From love of comfort and luxury, deliver us, O Holy Spirit. From wishing to seek or desire anything other than Thee, deliver us, O Holy Spirit. From everything that displeases Thee, deliver us, O Holy Spirit. Most loving Father, forgive us. Divine Word, have pity on us. Holy and Divine Spirit, leave us not until we are in possession of the Divine Essence, the Heaven of Heavens. Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, send us the Divine Consoler. Lamb of God, who takest away the sins of the world, fill us with the gifts of your Spirit. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, Make the fruits of the Holy Spirit increase within us. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of thy faithful, and enkindle in them the fire of thy love. Send forth thy Holy Spirit, and they shall be created, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit instructed the hearts of the faithful, Grant us by the same Spirit to be truly wise and ever to rejoice in his consolation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May your minds and hearts, your souls, be open to the life and to the promptings of the Holy Spirit. He who inspires us, who guides us, who fuels us, and who convicts us to deeper holiness. The Holy Spirit causes us to love the eternal well-being of our neighbor and to seek their connection to Christ for the sake of their increased heavenly hope. Uh, what a beautiful gift to be connected to the life of the Holy Spirit in this way and to always ask uh, for his gifts and his promptings.
Very good. Well, this has been our midweek update. Uh, a delight uh, to have you. Thank you for tuning in. Um, if you know of anyone who seems to be a little out of the loop and kind of feels that they want a little more connection, uh, help them out by sharing this video with them, uh, directing them to tune in or to sign up for Flocknote, and uh, and we'll be uh, communicating uh, the upcoming opportunities in the coming days. Thank you very much. God bless. Goodbye.